Before proceeding, please make sure to subscribe to Intel Maniac and turn on the bell icon for upcoming videos. You can always support my work with your likes, comments and shares. And you can join me on Facebook and Instagram at Dental Maniac. For images and transcripts, please visit my Patreon page, the link for which is given here above. Hello and in today's video, we will look into biology of tooth movement in response to orthodontic forces. For orthodontic forces, in order to move a tooth from one position to another, bone has to be resorbed from one side and deposited on the other. The pedial fibers are wavy in nature. After the application of orthodontic forces, regardless of the nature of the force, two areas of pressure and tension are created in the pedial space of a tooth. The wavy nature allows the pedial to stretch on the tension side and distort on the pressure side, resulting in the activation of osteoblasts on the tension side and osteoclasts on the pressure side so that remodeling of the bone can be done through a series of events. The objective of the orthodontic treatment is to produce tooth movement as much as possible by frontal desorption through light forces rather than by undermining resorption in heavy forces. By the end of this video, we will get to know the difference between a frontal and undermining resorption of the alveolar bone as a reaction to light in heavy forces. For now, let's focus on the course of events after application of orthodontic forces in two different directions and look at what happens with the heavy versus light force. To define light in heavy orthodontic forces, a light orthodontic force is a force that causes compression of blood vessels in the pressure site, while a heavy orthodontic force is the force that completely occludes blood vessels on the pressure site. Let's draw diagrams of two teeth to look into light in heavy forces in two different directions for each tooth. Whether the orthodontic forces is heavy or light, for the first two seconds, pedial of the tooth will react in the same manner for both kinds of forces. The alveolar bone bends for the initial one second of force application and this occurs because of the generation of the piezoelectric signals as we discussed in our previous video. If the force application continues for one to two seconds, the tooth moves with its entire attachment apparatus. The course of events after the first two seconds is different for heavy and light forces. So let's look into both of these forces and see how the tissue reacts. With continued and sustained light forces, Blood vessels will be partially compressed on the pressure side and dilated on the tension side. This causes a reduction in blood flow and also a reduction in oxygen flow through the blood on the pressure side. The pedial fibers and the cells within the pedial space will be distorted. This distortion causes tissues to break down into pieces. As a result, Phospholipids, which are an integral part of cell membranes, are released from the broken down tissues. The phospholipids are further broken down into arachidonic acids. The arachidonic acids will release prostaglandins as an end product. The prostaglandins then acts as a second messenger and will help increase cellular activation and differentiation necessary for the remodeling of the bone and the PDL. The resorption of the alveolar bone occurring as a result of the application of light orthodontic forces is called frontal resorption as the resorption is done inside out and starts from the lamina dura of the socket. On the other hand, if the forces applied are heavy in nature, the blood vessels instead of partially compressing will totally occlude on the compression side. When this happens, instead of cells being stimulated from the pedial space, the pressure side undergoes an ischemic and sterile necrosis. It's called sterile because there is no pathogen involved. The area of sterile necrosis has been termed the hyalinized layer. Osteoclasts from the nearby undamaged area adjacent to the hyalinized and necrotic zone will start resorption of the bone underneath the necrotic layer. This resorption is called undermining resorption as the resorption occurs under the hyalinized layer or under the laminar dora. The resorption of the alveolar bone with heavy forces takes time, hence the tooth doesn't move until the resorption is done. If seen through a graph, we can see that soon after the resorption is done, the tooth moves or let's say jumps to a new position. The tooth doesn't move for further few more days until the next round of undermining resorption occurs. If this graph is compared with the light forces, 
In light forces, the movement of the truth occurs in a slow, smooth, and continuous curve throughout the treatment time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do consider subscribing, give a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Thank you for watching.